you ready? So our family's journey towards cutting ingredients out of our diet started about 15 years ago. And the first two ingredients that we started cutting out of our family's diet was um, artificial colors and artificial <clears throat> flavors. And then a couple preservatives that are labeled with, oh, I can't even remember the labels of them. Um, TBH and TBHQ, I think. And that was 15 years ago. And as many of you know, um, a lot of new laws, a lot of the FDA's new laws make it so that um, companies that make and label the food don't have to show every ingredient that they use. Um, and that, coupled with the fact that companies are constantly changing what they label, Harrison, don't do that, what they label these harmful additives as. So they're constantly changing the name of these additives and I can't keep up with them anymore. So what used to be labeled TBHQ 15 years ago is now labeled something completely different. So in the beginning when we just read labels of everything we bought and tried to eliminate a couple of those um, triggering additives, additives that triggered our family's behavior and health, that, that has just snowballed in the last 15 years I can't keep up with learning about all the labels and the things that they might be eliminating, the things that they're not telling us that they're putting into foods. I just got exhausted trying to keep up with that. So my solution to that was to just start making more things at home. So it really wasn't that hard. You stop buying packaged products that have long lists of ingredients and you stick to the products that are either fresh or have minimal ingredients. And so some of the things that we stopped buying were the things with the longest list of ingredients. So take <clears throat> chips and crackers who have like, some of those chips have anywhere from 15 to 30 different ingredients. And over half of them, I don't even recognize as a food. So, the very first thing we did was we cut out, we stopped buying them and we only bought them for um, special occasions or like for the children's lunches. I would buy a couple bags of chips and when they were gone, they were gone. And we didn't buy any more until a couple weeks later when we went to the grocery store again. So that kind of slowly weaned us off of bought chips and crackers and, and those salty snacks. And I started filling in those gaps when we ran out with popcorn. And so gradually I decreased the um, amount of chips that I bought. And then I just slowly eliminated them all together. Um, so the family started complaining about popcorn for salty snacks and that being the only salty snack we had. And although I had experimented with um, making my own um, crackers before, I had never found a recipe that the family loved and even that I really desired to eat. So recently I came upon a study that explained how, why Doritos and Pringles and some of those big brands why they're so addicting or why you just crave them. There's something that happens when you have to open your mouth wide to put something in. So the triangular shape of the Dorito and the saddle shape of the Pringle both cause you to open your mouth wide when you put them into your mouth. And in doing so, you draw air in over your taste buds and that increases the amount of flavor you experience um that and the flavor enhancers that they add so i'm like oh that explains why 
my family why we crave Pringles and Doritos and things like that. So two of the things, <laughs> and I've noticed when my children eat these crackers, they all go for the bigger pieces first. They don't really like the tiny pieces. So making the crackers a little bigger, I like the tiny pieces. you like the tiny pieces in the, thin ones. in the thin ones and making them thin enough has always been an issue with crackers too. Most of the recipes I've tried have asked me to roll out the dough and that's just always complicated things for me because I couldn't roll it out thin enough to give the cracker a nice crispy crunch. So this recipe does that. This recipe, the crackers are so crispy, so crunchy and I toss them with seasonings and um, salt so the outside layer of the cracker gives you that burst of flavor that everybody loves. Okay, last thing. The crackers that you'll see Harrison and I make today are our favorite. And they are made with sourdough. Here's your little bonnet that you can have. They don't sour. They're not sour. No, they don't taste sour. Um, I'm also going to include a recipe for those of you that don't have sourdough and using white flour or wheat flour. And the ones with white flour <coughs> were a very strong runner up to the sourdough ones. And the ones with wheat flour, um, some of the children didn't complain about them, but they definitely weren't a favorite. Um, so anyway, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Very, very simple. And you'll see me make a double recipe, but the recipe that I'll link is just a single recipe. So um, I need a cup and a half of sourdough starter. You can use active starter or you can use discard. Either one works just fine. Discard gives the crackers a little bit more of a tart or a little bit more of a sour flavor than active sourdough starter. But otherwise, nobody really could tell a difference. So I have about two cups I have about one and three fourth cup of active starter in here and I need one and a half. So all that means is I'm gonna leave a little bit of starter in my jar to start another batch of starter so that we can make sourdough bread tomorrow. So I've got about a fourth a cup of starter in here and we're just gonna leave that and we'll use this, okay, yep. Okay, are you ready? Here we've got our six tablespoons of butter. It makes it, uh, Yep, makes it, don't splash it out though. And then half a teaspoon of salt. Cause it's hard. Yeah, keep mixing Do it. Do you have to roll it and then cut no, it No, we into don't have to roll it. Why is the sourdough getting don't mushy? Don't touch, please. Why don't, is it getting don't mushy? Touch, please. Because it's supposed to. Mm. Mix it all around. I think I got all the salt in, though. You got all the salt mixed in? Even though the butter was first. So when I first started trying to make a cracker that my family loved, um, I bought brought home a pack of... I brought home a box of wheat thins and I served those and the family loves those. So I looked at the ingredients um, to kind of get an idea what I might be missing. And the second ingredient, second or third ingredient on wheat thins was sugar. So I'm like, okay, my family likes their crackers. And I looked at um, Doritos too, had some sugar in. They like their crackers a little sweet. So I tried honey and maple syrup in my crackers, but that just made the crackers get brown because sugar bakes real fast. Um, so the crackers kind of had a burnt flavor. So I currently, and I have this in your recipe as optional, but I currently add a teaspoon per recipe of Truvia um, just because I think we're still weaning off of store-bought crackers and chips 
and my family's still expecting them to taste similar to that. Um, so probably eventually I will cut down and then eliminate the, this sweetener altogether. But I put a teaspoon of Truvia per recipe. And that just gives them a little bit, I think it cuts the sour flavor of the sourdough a little bit as well. And then the other thing that's optional is you can put your herbs in um, now if you want. Um, but I have not, um, I've learned that I like to put my flav flavorings on the outside of the cracker. So this step is completely optional, but because we have fresh chives, we are going to harvest some chives and saute them in a little bit of butter, probably about one oh, tablespoon boy, of butter. And we're going to add that to yep, our chives. mixture for some extra flavor. Can I try them? Yeah, you can eat them. They taste like mild onions. Okay, that's good. We've got enough. Wait, what? Sure, thank you. Let's see if I would like one. They're actually really good. They are good, aren't they? The aftertaste is kind of spicy. They taste spicy. The aftertaste. Mm, the aftertaste is spicy, yeah. Can I go with you to see Ruth? Yeah, you can go with me to see Ruth. Well, uh, no, not if you have a cold. You have to stay here. Mitchell can help mm -hmm. you with your schoolwork. That means I'm gonna do science and social studies first. Can I just wait okay, until leave you those. come? Okay, leave those. We might not need Can them. Can I just wait until you come to do my science and social studies? Mm. Wait. No. I'm doing... Uh, I have to learn to Kelly. Oh, no. I can help you with that. Okay. Is that all the time you make them? Mm -hmm. Can I try? Yeah. Yeah, we have to press that yet then but not yet so when um you saute any herbs that you want to add to your crackers if you saute them in a little bit of your butter it really brings out the flavor of the herbs so i want to add chives and garlic to my sourdough crackers today So I'm going to saute these fresh chives in a little bit of butter. And then when those are... What's our plan for tomorrow? Now when those are about done, and then we're gonna add the garlic. Okay, Harrison, can you press the garlic in there? Because garlic sautés very fast. So we wanna add that a little later. Okay, let mom help you, ready? Can I scrape that in? I'm um, sure if you can. If you can scrape it up. Is out. it hot? No, it's not hot. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <coughs> now it's starting to smell good, isn't it? <coughs> oh, that's a strong smell. Is it still sizzling? Yeah. Okay, we have to wait till it stops sizzling and then we can add it to our mixture. While that is getting, while that's cooling, let's get our cookie sheets ready, okay? Cookies! There, take those over. It's over and set them on the top part of the table where we don't have stuff. You go put these on. Put these on these cookie sheets. Yep. Now, is it still 
sizzling? Huh? Is your, our butter still sizzling? No. All right, so now it's ready to add to your your other mixture. This? Yep. You might use your spatula to scrape yeah. it out. The schlecker. Your schlecker. All right. I'm ready to mix. Yep. Here, let me finish scraping this out for you. Okay. Now the butter turned green from the chives, didn't it? It did. Oh, crack is going to be more brown? Probably. Is it all mixed in? Almost. Oh, it looks like crackers already. It looks like crackers already. <laughs> looks like all crackers that we made already. So this is probably the most difficult part of the whole process. And it's just spreading the crackers thin on this paper. How does it like get dry and then you can take them out? Well, you watch, you'll be surprised. You've never been here when I've made the crackers, have you? No. But I sold them. Yeah, and you like to eat them. So what you're looking for is just the, the crackers the are, are spread evenly on the parchment paper. And if you're making a double recipe, you'll want to spread it out over three sheets of parchment paper. And if you're making a single recipe, you'll want to spread it out over one and a half. Can I try to spread this one out, Mom? Sure, I'll get you a little spatula, okay? A little one. This one has a little bit a lot. Here, I'll do this one. No, they have the same amount. Do you want yeah. me to take some off of that? Yeah, okay. Okay. So then you just go like this, go back and forth. You have to hold the paper with like this. <laughs> there has to be a professional at it. Yeah, it takes some practice. Try not to get it on my cookie sheets because then I have to wash my cookie sheets. I ain't really a pro at it, but, you know. Got a little on your cookie sheets. That's okay. I can... <laughs> <laughs> okay, let mom help, you know. Okay. I feel like you need like something sticky to stick it down. Yeah, you just have to learn how to hold your spatula so it doesn't just pull up. Like that, you just... Mm -hmm. I usually hold everything that's round, like a mm -hmm. pencil. All right, you know what we're gonna do next? What? I'm gonna put them into the oven. <gasps> the oven? Yep, and we're gonna bake them. And then now, we'll, well, what are we going to do while, um... While they bake? Yeah. We're gonna wash dishes. <laughs> so now we're gonna put our crackers in the oven and set the timer for 10 minutes.
to. Or maybe just rinse them. Hmm? Maybe you'll just rinse them. So now I'm just gonna feed my sourdough starter and set it back on the counter so that we can bake bread later this week. Push this, push this way. You may weigh it. Here, hang on, I gotta zero it first. 299 grams or 10 ounces, 10.5 ounces. Now take the spatula out once and see how much it, now it only weighs 8.9 ounces. The spatula has to be pretty heavy. Nine. 1.7 ounces. Eight, nine. Okay, can I have the jar bonnet? Jar bonnet, yes. Let me shake it off, make sure there's no hair in it. Let's see. Okay, put the scissor, or you're gonna weigh the scissor. Let's see if this is mine. Turn your water off. I'm almost done. All right, this is how we're going to roll them. Yeah, make them into crackers. Oh, you can cut it. That makes some sense. So after 10 minutes, we're going to take them out. And score them. Score? What point did one get? No, it just, scoring just means make lines so they break. Did one get For one another point? 20 minutes. All right, now they're going to be in for another 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Oh! Which way? Doesn't matter. There you go. Okay, now put your other hot pad down. That one gets really hot. This one gets really hot and you can and you can do it a little, but barely. Okay, don't shake the table, please. Okay, are we ready? Yep. So spraying the crackers with butter is a completely optional step. I like to do this because it helps my seasonings and salt stick better. Try not to spray on my table too much, okay? Did you ever squat with butter? Okay, that's good, that's good. Mom, did you squat with butter? Okay, don't again? spray all over the table. Kind of hold it like this. Yeah, you can try that one. 
How is it? Is it good? Mm -hmm. No, not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, that's hot. No, it's hot. <laughs> all right. Are you all right? Yeah. How do you get them off? Okay, hang on. I'll show you. Need you need special gloves? Or you just dumb. Probably can. Looks so good. See? Yeah. He does. So then these tiny Oops. little pieces, I keep in the freezer and use them for mm -hmm. toppings on different casseroles instead of breadcrumbs. So we definitely had more mess today than normal. And not all of it was Harrison's fault. <laughs> the mess wasn't all your fault, right? Mom made a big mess too. Huh? So now I'm going to make a cheese ball and so normally a cheese ball calls for some cream cheese. So what I've started using instead of cream cheese is the just yogurt that I have strained extra long. So down here in the pot you can see all the whey that has strained from this yogurt overnight. So I'm gonna use this as cream cheese. And this works especially well when you don't incubate your yogurt to be real tart. And I'm gonna try and link my yogurt recipe in the description. Maybe I can even do it here on the screen, um, but I'm not real savvy at that. So I'll definitely link the yogurt video in the description. So to make my cheese ball, I'm gonna use two parts of this cream cheese. Harrison, do you want to help get yeah, your Bankley? Sure. So I've got about a cup of this cream cheese and then we're gonna add one part <coughs> mayonnaise. <coughs> you 
You want to add the mayonnaise, Harrison? Oh, it's mayonnaise. I thought it was butter. No, it's mayonnaise. All of it? Yeah, you can add all of it. And then you'll want um, one packet of ranch seasoning mix or then two tablespoons of ranch seasoning mix. Or you can use taco seasoning. All right, can you mix that in? I'm gonna use the spatula. So because this yogurt hadn't been refrigerated, my cheese ball was pretty soft. Well, you have to put your spoon on. Yeah. And sometimes I don't even bother decorating it with chili powder. Okay, don't make the paper rattle, okay? But because we want today's cheese ball to look extra nice, we're going to decorate it with chili powder. Does that make it good or just makes it decorate? It just decorates it a little. So the boys and I are out here setting up our rotational grazing for the cows. This is new to us this year. Um, we've always just had big paddocks and ran the cows on those. But last year we added another couple acres of pasture. And then what happened is the cows had too much grass and then they didn't eat the less desirable grass so then our pastures got real uneven and we had some thistles start coming up um, so with rotational grazing we can make sure that they clean up one area real well before we move them on to the next area so we are out here and we're checking our existing fences which is our perimeter fences and you can see that over the winter there's some garbage that blew on the fences and also um, the deer tend to go through the fences and tear them down. So we are checking that fence and putting in some posts and we're gonna put a long strip along the eastern edge of this pasture here and we're gonna let the cows out. Hopefully today yet. And as usual, when we're out here every winter, after every winter, we find a bunch more junk from the old homesteaders that lived here before us. Today we found a whole pile of these old steel fence posts. And we are bringing them all up here on this concrete pad that used to be a hog lot or a cattle lot or maybe both. I think you can just go on to the next post. Okay, let's stretch it tight and see if we've got it in the right one.
Oh, seven. Nope, he's got to put it in the ground first. Can I move it? Can you see it? 2.7? 2 2.7. 2 That's good. Two hundred. So here you can see we have a lot of this plantain growing here. And we've got nettles coming up here. Okay, that's good. And there's thistles. And we've got some burdock. <laughs> I'm just thinking how fitting it is that we are building this fence today for the cows because the the nettles and the plantain and even the thistles have medicinal value to the cows but the same as my kids are not going to eat my homemade sourdough crackers if they have access to doritos the cows are not going to eat the medicinal plants if they have access to all the sweet grass that they want so We've got enough power or enough electricity in all of our fences, so we're gonna let them run this strip. And I have a feeling that this is probably a little too big, but I also don't want them out here more than a couple hours. So then I can run them back out here tomorrow and we won't have to move the fence tomorrow. So I'll bring them out here for a couple hours tonight and then I will let them back to the barn where their water is and then bring them back out in the morning. All right, look at the cows. You can't tell me that they don't know what's going on. Pretty sure that at least the cows that we had last summer, they know. Norma probably doesn't know any better because she hasn't been on our pasture. So here we go. Come on girls. We sure haven't made it real far yet. That new fence up there, the new perimeter is what they'll have to get used to because they normally had the entire pet up here. Paprika there, the little black one. She's our little heifer. She's about two years old, so she's likely to give us the most trouble. If anybody gives us trouble, it'll be likely to be her because she's a heifer, and that's just the way they are. It's my most favorite time of the year, letting the cows out on pasture for the first time. <laughs> 